A new LLM project with radically faster inference is totally changing how people are thinking about what's possible with generative AI. On a recent video about Sora that I published, YouTube commenter Coldly Analytical wrote, I regard February 15th, 2024 as AI's day zero. Sora and Gemini 1.5 both announced on the same day, and both pushing us from the beta test phase into the AI is a real usable technology zone. I think it's an astute comment, and quietly, there is another leg of this next phase of AI stool that came over the weekend. It started for most with a tweet from Matt Schumer, the CEO of HyperWrite, who said, Wild tech you have to try. Grok, G-R-O-Q dot com. They are serving Mixtral at nearly 500 tokens a second. Answers are pretty much instantaneous. Opens up new use cases and completely changes the UX possibilities of existing ones. Matt was the first to notice a live demo from what claims to be the world's fastest LLM. When you go to grok.com, it says, We'd suggest asking about a piece of history, requesting a guide on how to achieve your New Year resolution, or copy and pasting in some text to be translated by prompting Make It French. This alpha demo lets you experience ultra-low latency performance using the foundational LLM, Llama 270B created by Meta AI, running on the Grok LPU inference engine. Now, they actually give you two options for model. You can use either Mixtral or the Llama 270B. But suffice it to say that the speed at which to generate responses has people's minds scrambling. A little later over the weekend, Matt again writes, The first public demo using Grok, a lightning-fast AI answers engine. It writes factual, cited answers with hundreds of words in less than a second. More than three quarters of the time is spent searching, not generating. The LLM runs in a fraction of a second. So what is going on? Well, Grok on its website, on its Why Grok section, says... Grok is on a mission to set the standard for Gen AI inference speed, helping real-time AI applications come to life. In its FAQ section, Grok writes, What is the LPU inference engine? An LPU inference engine, with LPU standing for Language Processing Unit, is a new type of end-to-end processing unit system that provides the fastest inference for computationally intensive applications with a sequential component to them, such as AI language applications or LLMs. On the question of why it is so much faster than GPUs for LLMs and Gen AI, Grok writes, The LPU is designed to overcome the two LLM bottlenecks, compute density and memory bandwidth. An LPU has greater compute capacity than a GPU and CPU in regards to LLMs. This reduces the amount of time per word calculated, allowing sequences of text to be generated much faster. Additionally, eliminating external memory bottlenecks enables the LPU inference engine to deliver orders of magnitude better performance on LLMs compared to GPUs. Jay Scrambler on Twitter wrote a slightly more comprehensive explanation, which I found useful. Jay writes, Grok is serving the fastest responses I've ever seen. We're talking almost 500 tokens a second. I did some research on how they're able to do it. Turns out they developed their own hardware that utilizes LPUs instead of GPUs. Grok developed a novel processing unit known as the Tensor Streaming Processor, or TSP, which they categorize as a linear processor unit, or LPU. Unlike traditional GPUs that are parallel processors with hundreds of cores designed for graphics rendering, LPUs are architected to deliver deterministic performance for AI computations. The LPU's architecture is a departure from the SIMD, Single Instruction Multiple Data Model, used by GPUs, and favor a more streamlined approach that eliminates the need for complex scheduling hardware. This design allows every clock cycle to be utilized effectively, ensuring consistent latency and throughput. For developers, this means that performance can be precisely predicted and optimized, which is critical in real-time AI applications. Energy efficiency is another area where LPUs shine. By reducing the overhead of managing multiple threads and avoiding the underutilization of cores, LPUs can deliver more computations per watt. Grok's innovative chip design allows multiple TSPs to be linked together without the traditional bottlenecks found in GPU clusters, making them extremely scalable. This enables linear scaling of performance as more LPUs are added, simplifying the hardware requirements for large-scale AI models and making it easier for developers to scale their applications without re-architecting their systems. So what does this all mean? LPUs could provide a massive improvement compared to GPUs for serving AI applications in the future. If anything, it will be great to have alternative high-performing hardware since A100s and H100s are so in demand. So even if all of that doesn't make it necessarily too much clearer, what you should be taking away is that there is a new hardware approach underlying this. This is not a different model akin to GPT-4 or Gemini or anything like that. This is a new approach to processing that lies underneath. Carlos Perez at Intuit Machine explains further. He writes, Grok is a radically different kind of AI architecture. Among the new crop of AI chip startups, Grok stands out with a radically different approach centered around its compiler architecture for optimizing a minimalist yet high-performance architecture. Grok's secret sauce is this compiler-first method that shuns complexity in favor of tailored efficiency. At the heart of Grok's architecture is an almost surprisingly bare-bones design that does away with unnecessary logic in favor of raw parallel throughput. The hardware itself is comparable to an ASIC, an application-specific integrated circuit finely tuned for machine learning. 
However, unlike a fixed function ASIC, Grok leverages a custom compiler that can adapt and optimize across different models. It is this combination of a streamlined architecture and an intelligent compiler that sets Grok apart. The key insight is that many AI chip stack components, like GPUs, bring extraneous hardware and bloat. Grok returns to first principles, recognizing that machine learning workloads are about massive parallelism over simple data types and operations. By eliminating generic hardware and even concepts like locality, the design maximizes throughput and efficiency. This is enabled by Grok's compiler that sits between software frameworks like TensorFlow and the hardware. The compiler analyzes and optimizes neural network graphs, tailoring and mapping them to the underlying architecture for accelerated execution. It breaks computations into the smallest operations to unlock parallelism. The compiler also enables capabilities like batch size 1 inference that ensures all hardware is usefully leveraged. Critically, Grok built its compiler before even finalizing the hardware design. The software insights directly inform the architecture. This co-design process allowed inference-specific optimization without legacy limitations. The innovative compiler-first methodology allows custom optimization that balances flexibility with performance. So basically the idea here is that whereas, for example, NVIDIA GPUs do lots of different things, they're used to run gaming, they were for a time used for crypto mining, the Grok chip is totally optimized for the generative AI world. Carlos used that phrase, first principles, and that's really what this seems like, a design from the ground up based on this particular use case, which is admittedly a set of different use cases. Still, for most people, this is really just all about speed. Dina Yerlin writes, side-by-side -side, Grok versus GPT 3.5, completely different user experience, a game changer for products that require low latency. Ethan Malik writes, quote, GPT 3.5 class LLMs are too slow. Sure, that was true last week. Here is Grok running Llama 2. My favorite comment on this when I posted the same video on LinkedIn, it is too fast. It shouldn't be this fast. Tom Osman writes, love seeing all the Grok demos on the feed, but is it only good for working with LLMs? Answer, nope, it's insane at other stuff too. Watch this clip from Grok Labs that shows it running style clip on an image to create eight different styles in 1024 pixels in just 0.185 seconds. Basically, this is showing an image generation capacity that is equally insanely impressively fast. Gabor Sell writes, Comparing time to complete answer for a simple code debugging question. Grok wins on speed 10x faster than Gemini, 18x faster than ChatGPT. Although Gabor did say that Gemini wins on quality of answer. Some people think this is so disruptive that we're going to see Grok get scooped up by one of the big AI labs. Farron Mather writes prediction, Grok will get a $10 billion acquisition offer within this month. Grokker Tom Ellis responded and said, add two zeros and we'll think about it. Just kidding, we're not for sale. But we are building out more and more infra every day to serve customers with the lowest latency LLMs available. Now, to the extent that there has been any critique of this or skepticism, it's been around the potential price. Felix Red Panda writes, how does Grok make economic sense? One of these cards costs 20K and has 0.23 gigabytes of memory. So do people buy 320 of these cards and fill two full racks of them to serve a single Llama 70B for 10 million, including servers? That can't be how this works, right? Bindu Ready from Abacus, however, bites back saying, I'm seeing lots of takes claiming that Grok does not make economic sense. Barely anything makes economic sense at the beginning. LLM companies still lose billions. Vision Pro is too expensive. Even the much-loved Cybertruck is too expensive. The cool thing about Grok is the blazing fast inference. The economics will make sense in time. Now others are just thinking about what opportunities this opens up. Responding to a question, what are some novel use cases now possible because of this speed, AI solopreneur Levels.io says, so I thought about this. If you hook up a just-as-fast text-to-speech model and fast whisper-speech-to-text model to Grok, you can have instant conversations from human to AI and back without any delays, like ChatGPT's TTS five-second delay. Arvid Call responded to that. AI could respond while you're still speaking the last syllables of your word. I think we have to rethink what this could be used for. Honestly, I feel the humans are too slow to be even interesting for this kind of speed. Can you imagine how fast this thing could code as an autonomous agent? Sully Omar writes, imagine the possibilities with a model that has 1 million contexts like Gemini Pro 1.5, instant and cheap inference like Grok, GPT-5-like reasoning. We'll be building insane things. And Andrew V responds, imagine how dated this post will be in a year and what our imagination will be dreaming of then. Now, obviously, people are only just starting to dig into Grok and there will be a lot more to talk about in the coming days and weeks. But you can go check it out right now at grok, G-R-O-Q dot com. This is definitely one that is benefited by a live demo, so I hope you go check it out. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.